This is Witchbase News for Friday the 1st of November 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week we see one of the biggest weeks ever as the Ascendancy update introduces Powerplay 2.0 and the Mandalay Explorer. FDev announce when the Type 8 will be available for credits with more details on the new system colonization feature and more. If you enjoy our videos consider subscribing to the channel and remember to ding the little bell to make sure you see all our content and community posts and if you'd like to help support our channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. Just a real quick heads up before we get into what has been an enormous week for Elite Dangerous. A Galnet article surfaced earlier this week about a famed treasure hunter going missing and in doing so it signalled the start of the now traditional Halloween event for the game. I've posted a link to the complete solution for the event below if you need it but you'll also find a link down there to the Galnet article if you just want to find your own way through. I won't spoil it here but suffice to say completing the event will reward some free in-game stuff as well as some snippets of story that you won't have heard before. Happy Halloween hunting. This week is without a doubt one of the biggest weeks the game has ever seen due in no small part to the deployment of the Ascendancy update that launched Powerplay 2.0 as well as launching the Mandalay Explorer into ARK's early access. The deployment of Ascendancy followed a 9 hour downtime for the servers which returned bang on schedule 3pm UK time. There were some colourful snake based error messages in the early opening hours of the update but as at the time of recording at least they quickly settled down and were mostly driven by the swamp of players downloading the update and then logging in. The issues with power aligned NPC aggression that we mentioned on last weeks show have been dealt with in the wider expanse of galactic space. You will still find high levels of aggression in power stronghold systems but that honestly strikes me as entirely fair and reasonable. If you're looking for a real quick and easy primer on engaging with powerplay then Frontier themselves produced an excellent product launch page for Ascendancy that can be seen on screen now. The page itself you'll find linked in the description below this video and I'd highly recommend taking a look at it particularly if you're completely new to powerplay old or new. As well as giving a brief look at the many types and flavours of benefits that pledging to a power in the galaxy can bring the site also gives some pointers on what you can do to earn merits under the new system and where to start. Something that was woefully unclear under Powerplay 1.0. As well as the benefits and where to start the launch page also provides a look at the new revamped powerplay map filter and how to use it and the settings therein to get the map to show you exactly what you're looking for. There's also mention on the page of the two new additions to the shifted and reworked powerplay portraits. Those two new faces being Alliance player Nintendo Kane and the Federation's own definitely not Kevin Costner. And one of the new powerplay gameplay options is also shown off on the page that being hacking and changing the hollow billboard adverts on the outside of stations. There's also pointers on the page to help you find the weekly task list that we spoke about on last weeks show and some visuals to demonstrate the many cosmetic changes that now occur inside stations and starports as a result of the presence of Powerplay 2 including new power specific graffiti that we've started to hear is now also being spotted in the wild. I've only lightly touched on the pages full features here which also include full patch notes for the update. As I've mentioned at the top you'll find the page linked in the description below this video. As part of the slew of livestream announcements on Wednesday Frontier also let go that new powerplay specific ship cosmetic options were becoming available alongside powerplay 2.0. 
There's a raft of Power Play faction specific ship paint jobs now available on the ARC store allowing commanders to display their allegiances in colours and if you want to quite literally fly the flag for your chosen superpower faction then that's also now available in the form of a new ship kit piece called the Power Play Banner. The holographic flag style banners fit into spoiler slots except for the Mandalay where they fit into the tail slot. They work for most ships in the game except for the following the Cobra Mark IV, Diamondback Scout, Hauler, Type 7 and Federal Dropship. There's also some new power play bobbleheads on the ARC store allowing you to proudly display your specific power player allegiance inside as well as outside the cockpit of your ship. And whilst it isn't specifically mentioned in the patch notes there's now an information panel on the left hand side of your ships cockpit that frankly may have been there before but I don't recall seeing it and it provides some great at a glance information about the system you're in including its controlling power, primary economy and security level etc which is generally useful both inside and away from power play. Of course the other big part of the Ascendancy update cannot go unmentioned that being the arrival of the Zorgon Peterson Mandalay Explorer class vessel into ARC's powered early access. One of the big selling points of the ship was of course its jump range with Frontier specifically stating that the native SEO capable ship would easily rival the exploration fitted Anaconda often referred to as the Jumperconda in the game. Obviously outfitting and engineering choices have a huge effect ultimately on what any ship is capable of but the numbers we're hearing from across the community for exploration fitted and engineered Mandalays seems to be settling somewhere quite comfortably in the 70 light year range without too much trouble with more extreme builds producing even more. It's worth noting as well in case you missed our first look at the vessel a couple of weeks back that the Mandy when engineered is very very fast indeed boosting comfortably to 563 meters per second and it will also absolutely turn on a dime should you ask it to. As they have with the previous ships this year Frontier also premiered a promotional trailer for the Mandalay this week and the lone explorer vibe runs deep in the gorgeous somewhat Star Trek Voyager inspired cinematic piece. You'll find that linked in the description below if you haven't yet seen it. Overall the community seems to have absolutely embraced the new era of ships to Elite Dangerous but I hazard to say the Mandalay even more so particularly as exploration is such a huge part of Elite Dangerous for so many players. All our social media feeds have been flooded with images of Mandalays in various colours and ship kit guises as the community settles into a new exploration at the very least meta ship. If the cadence of ship rollout follows the established pattern up till now you should see the Mandalay available for credits in the game in around 3 months or so and in that vein it was announced this week that the previous early access vessel the Type 8 cargo hauler will be available for credits in the game on the 28th of November exactly 4 weeks after the launch of the Mandalay in early access. In case you missed the livestream on Wednesday then Frontier are nowhere near done with new ships however as they announced this week that the next new ship to enter the game marking the 10th anniversary of the launch of Elite Dangerous will be a new medium class 3 seater multi role variant of the Cobra, the Cobra Mark V. There's no specific date available yet on when we can expect to see that in the game but we are expecting to hear more about the new ship in the next Frontier Unlocked livestream on the 27th of November. It likely cannot have escaped your notice this week that Frontier also took the opportunity afforded to them by the livestream to announce and give a surface level overview of the next big feature coming to Elite Dangerous system colonization. 
Many in the community, us included, had speculated that the new feature would be base building but whilst there are obvious elements of that in this feature, system colonization is really something quite different and something that is also very well suited to the unique nature of Elite Dangerous when set amongst the other space sim titles in the marketplace. We covered off the details made available to us as part of the content creator partner program in Wednesdays video but there was nuance in the live streamed chat between Arthur and Zack that we didn't have prior knowledge of. More details will be coming in the next livestream but it does seem from what we've heard that the system colonization can be an effort driven by an individual commander and won't necessarily need a colossal combined group effort. With that said we think it likely although it wasn't specifically stated that group efforts will make the colonization effort go quicker in a similar fashion to how community goals work. Indeed this assumption is being made by some of the large haulage based player groups like Operation Ida who we've heard are exploring plans at least to bring their hauling might to bear on other commanders system colonization efforts when asked to do so. Zack also specifically stated that the new feature is also being designed to dovetail with Powerplay 2.0 for players that perhaps want to participate in Powerplay but are less combat inclined. They'll be able to use their exploration skills to colonise new space for their power to expand into through the colonisation feature. Frontier of Promised, the next livestream will feature guest developers talking about the feature and they'll also be discussing release schedules as well as some unannounced aspects of the feature. What a year to be a commander and it's still not done yet. Have you pledged to a superpower for the first time? Did you pick up a Mandalay this week and are you now scouting for systems to colonise? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.